Channel 2 News begins right now with breaking news. And right now at 6, police helicopter down. The chief asking for prayers for two of his officers who had to be cut from the wreckage after the crash in an apartment complex in the city. The pilot and the uh, co-pilot were trapped in the wreckage for an extended period of time. Ahead, team coverage with live reports from the scene and the latest on the officer's condition. Good morning. It is 6 a.m. Saturday, May 2nd. I'm Jacob Resco, and thank you for joining us. We'll get to meteorologist Campbell Marshall in a moment. But first, we want to start with that breaking news. Two HPD officers in the hospital after the helicopter they were in crashed on the property of the Biscayne apartment complex in the 17,000 block of Imperial Valley. We have our team of reporters working on it. Channel 2's Joel Eisenbaum live at the hospital where the officers were taken. But we start with Channel 2's Taisha Walker at the scene of the crash on the north side. Taisha. Jacob, good morning. I want you to take a look right behind me. You can see exactly where that police helicopter fell this morning out of the sky. I'm told by some residents that that building is the apartment office. So luckily, no one was inside of that building, at least to our knowledge at this time. The accident happened around 2 a.m. Police tell us that a Harris County forensic science team was working on a homicide in the area when they spotted the plane go down and called it in. Inside of the aircraft were two HPD officers, one a pilot, the other a co-pilot. The officers were in the air checking out reports of bodies in a body according to police chief Art Acevedo. The wreck was so bad, we're told, that firefighters had to cut both of those officers out of the helicopter. They were then airlifted to the medical center where they are currently at. Police chief Art Acevedo stopped by the scene earlier before making his way to the hospital. This is what he had to say. The, the aircraft went down. We don't have any idea of why it went down at this time. We've established a crime scene and a perimeter. Those officers at last check are both at the uh, medical center at Memorial Hermann Hospital in surgery. According to police chief Art Acevedo, he's also asking for the public's prayers for those officers, their co-workers and their families at this time. Reporting live, Taisha Walker, KPRC, Channel 2 News. This continues now with Joel Eisenbaum. He's joining us live from Memorial Hermann in the medical center with the latest. Joel. Hey, good morning. Well, Jacob, right now we are waiting a press conference, which I understand will be hosted by Mayor Sylvester Turner as well as Chief Art, uh, I'm sorry, Chief Art Acevedo. Um, we've been given sort of a five-minute warning on that, so as soon as that happens, of course, we'll bring it to you. We have not gotten any sort of condition updates officially on either of these officers, either the pilot or the co-pilot. Um, at last report, each was in critical condition after being taken by life flight here after being cut out of that fox unit, that uh, helicopter. Um, they were taken here, and at this point, we've seen a steady stream of both officers and civilians. Civilians, we presume, are family members. Chief Art Acevedo, in an earlier press conference overnight, had told us that they had actually picked up the family members uh, and brought them here to Memorial Hermann. And then we have seen, uh, I would say, dozens of officers who are right now sort of standing by outside the front of Memorial Hermann here in the medical center. But at this very moment, we have not gotten a condition update officially on either the pilot or the co-pilot. We are awaiting information we believe will be brought to us by both the mayor and Chief Art Acevedo within the next few minutes. It's sort of a fluid scene, though. They, um, When you have something uh, this tragic happening, they, they, the time can slide a little bit in terms of when that press conference happens. But that's the very latest at this moment from Memorial Hermann in the Med Center. All right, hey, Joel, we'll take off Main Street. All right, right now we're getting an update on the breaking news we've been telling you about. Houston Police Chief Art Acevedo and Houston's Mayor Sylvester Turner have just started a news conference. Let's listen That's in. Passed. And so um, I, I, I want to ask the city of Houston to continue to, to lift up, number one, both families, but especially lift up the family of the police officer that has died um, uh, this morning and lift up, uh, lift up his, his, his wife and his 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 parents and um, all their relatives and friends. 
and then at the same time lift up lift up the entire HPD family, the Houston Police Department, because uh, it's, it is a it is a family, so it is a, that extended family. So lift them up. This is this is a sad morning uh, when you when you lose one, and at the same time the other one is still. Uh, getting the, the treatment that, uh, the, uh, from an outstanding hospital right here. And I, I certainly want to thank the medical staff, the entire medical staff, uh, for just their professionalism and, and what they have been doing and what they will continue to do. Now, let me yell, let me stop and, and bring up uh, Chief Acevedo. Thank, thank, thank you, Mayor. Thanks for always being here, and thanks for your leadership, your support. Most importantly, your, your prayers. Please, uh, we're a community of faith, and you're a man of faith, and uh, I think it, it really lifts us up. We need our faith now more than ever. I want to give everyone an update of what occurred this morning in terms of uh, a, a, big, a quick summary. Uh, then I will uh, open up the questions when we're done, but just realize that this is going to be a, a very long investigation. A uh, little, little around 2 a.m., a little before 2 a.m., the Houston Police Department received a call of uh, bodies in the, in the bayou, up there in the uh, Greens Point Bayou. Uh, Fox, uh, 75 Fox, one of our aircraft with the pilot, with the pilot and the tactical flight officer responded to the area. They began a search of the bayou for the reported bodies in the bayou. Uh, a little after, a, a little within a few minutes of their arrival, a Houston Forensic Science Center uh, CSU, crime scene unit, that was processing a homicide scene, saw Fox go down and auto rotation into an apartment comp complex in the uh, 10,700 10, block of Imperial, uh, Imperial uh, Valley. Uh, they put it out to the police department. We, made, we immediately began searching, and at about 2.04 a.m., uh, witnesses in the apartment complex where the aircraft went down, uh, flagged down units, and uh, we were able to, to immediately uh, find the wreckage with the two occupants uh, uh, trapped in, in the wreckage, which is very mangled wreckage. HFD responded immediately with uh, quite a few assets, and they spent probably the next hour uh, trying to extricate our two officers. I want to just tell HFD that they did a phenomenal job. There was a lot of fuel that was spilled on the scene. And as you can imagine, that fuel is very flammable. And when you're using instruments to try to save our officers, I, I think it was very heroic, their efforts. They put their, they put their lives on the line. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, uh, they, they are in the Meadow Valor tonight when they were in that environment, uh, cutting, desperately cutting our, our officers out. Uh, Life Flight responded, and uh, somewhere around 3 a.m., shortly thereafter, our first officer was life flighted here to Herman Memorial, where sadly, despite the valiant efforts of everyone involved from HFD to Life Flight, and to the, the best trauma docs in, in the nation on, on, the, on planet Earth, uh, he succumbed to his injuries. That was a tactical flight officer. I'm not gonna say much about him other than I can say that we, the family's here, his wife is here, he was survived by a wife and two young children. His parents are here, his in-laws are here, and uh, we actually picked them up. We brought them here because we are a family there. Uh, no one should, so we're not going to say much more about them because we want to make sure that the entire family is notified properly and they don't find out uh, from the media that they've lost a loved one. Our pilot was extricated next, uh, was taken out safely from the aircraft. He is currently in surgery. He's in, uh, he's, he's very banged up, some significant injuries. Uh, but we're hopeful that he'll survive. But having said that, this is very traumatic, a lot of trauma. And you know that when you have trauma, it can turn very quickly. So we're asking for the community's prayers for everyone involved, from the involved families, 
our extended air operations unit that we're so proud of that do a phenomenal job day in and day out. It's pretty ironic that just yesterday morning we graduated a class and, and, and we had Fox fly out because we had, you know, COVID. So we couldn't do your traditional uh, graduation. So we wanted to do something special and Fox flew out. And uh, somebody told me that uh, a few hours later, we'd have another an aircraft down in the We'd lose a really good man. Uh, I would have said, no way. The NTSB and the FAA uh, will be conducting an investigation. The police department will actually approach this from our investigative standpoint as a homicide investigation because we've lost one of our own. And we know that you, you, we don't leave no stone unturned as part of our investigation into the causative factor in this crash. So we will look at it from a criminal standpoint. Uh, again, to make sure that uh, there was no criminal activity that led to this uh, this tragic incident, and the NTSB will obviously bring all their assets along with the FAA. Um, what will happen next is that we will have a movement for our deceased officer to the medical examiner's office. Our family assistance unit is here. Our psych services unit is here. Our peer support team is here. HPLU, the Houston Police Officers Union, is here with Ray Hunt and Joe Gamaldi and uh, just the, 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 the Doug, all of them. They're all here. Our executive assistant chiefs are here. Uh, it's just, uh, uh, and there's my fire. C come up, guys. Come on up. Uh, they just did a phenomenal job. And uh, Chief, would you, Chief, Chief, Chief you, you were at the seizure. Can you talk very briefly about the the rescue? Uh, I don't know if you heard what I was saying, but I, I, it was very heroic that your guys with all that uh, fuel, they, they put themselves at risk, and, you, and they're heroes. So I want you to talk about the the, the extrication piece. Uh, let me just say a couple other things real quick. There's always a silver lining. You've got to look for a silver lining. And that silver lining is that somehow our aircraft, could it could have landed and crashed into a very heavily populated apartment complex into buildings where Houstonians were asleep. And by the grace of God and some good good piloting, they avoided the building. And actually, when you all see the footage later on, pictures, they actually uh, auto-rotated into, in between the uh, pool house, the clubhouse, we all know that the pools are closed right now because of COVID and a palm tree. The other, if that aircraft would have crashed into an occupied building, we who knows, it would have been very ugly scene. And as a result of that silver lining, we, we didn't have any other loss of life and we, and we have a pilot that's in there right now fighting for his. So uh, I just wanna make sure people realize that uh, that, that, that is some silver lining. And when you have incidents like this, you've got to find the silver lining. Uh, because they, they had they crashed into that apartment building with all those families in there, it would have been a much different scene. And so with that, I'd like Chief Griffin, if you could, uh, Griffin, uh, talk real quickly, briefly about the, uh, the rescue operation. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Herbert Griffin, Chief of Operations for Houston Fire Department. I got on location. Uh, we did have the uh, helicopter down on the side. Uh, heavy rescue, uh, 11 was there. When I approached the helicopter on the side, we still had one officer still pinned in in the helicopter. Uh, the men and women of the police department, the fire department did an excellent job extricating them out. Uh, heavy rescue was able to get the member out the house, uh, out the uh, chopper, get him loaded up and transported over to the, uh, the life flight. Um, there were no problems with uh, None of the issues on operational scene on, on location. Um, they did a wonderful job, the men and women did. Um, something like this is, is, is horrific. Like the chief said, uh, the, the cop that was trapped between the uh, laundry room and an actual uh, tree. Um, so it's, it's a blessing it didn't hit the actual uh, apartment complex. So thank you, thank you, chief. Now, uh, there, at about 3 a.m., there were some shots fired in the area that uh, people keep bringing that up. Uh, HPD officers immediately responded, and we have six, six, I believe, six individuals that have been uh, taken into custody related to that shot, uh, the shots fired. 
Uh, uh, so if you've heard about that, I was asked earlier at the scene, aircraft had been shot at or shot down, and my response was we don't have any indication of that. Uh, but uh, we know that uh, law enforcement aircraft get shot at on a regular basis, not just with uh, live fire, but they also get shot at with uh, tar targeted with lasers. And so we will also make that part of our investigation just to leave no stone unturned. Uh, so uh, with that, again, we just thank the mayor to our team from, from air operations, uh, everyone that responded, thank you. And uh, we'll open it up to questions for uh, myself or the mayor. You're going to have to speak up. I'm sorry, sir. Is it the pilot or the tactical flight officer who succumbed? The, the, the tactical flight officer succumbed to his injuries. Can you tell us the years of service? I'm not going to talk about that because people can connect dots. And uh, family may be watching right now that doesn't know. So that's why I'm going to be, I'm not going to talk about anything else. Uh, on, uh, I, don't, I don't want this fam any member of that family to find out. And I would ask the media, if you get a tip, have some decency. That, that, that doesn't make a good reporter. It makes you a bad human being if you put it out over the air before we do, because we don't put it out until we know the family knows. And we've had that happen once before with, with Steve Perez, and that was not pretty. So I would just ask you, we don't sell our souls just to get a tip. We, we will put it out as soon as we know it. The, that the family is ready. Uh, we, I think we owe that to the family. Did you hear something similar to a gas cam on a helicopter? We, we, there'll be all kinds of instruments on there. We will have FLIR that was probably running, which is the uh, forward looking infrared uh, uh, device that actually is used to look for heat signatures. So we will have, we will have all kinds of stuff to look at and the NTSB will as well. No, we don't know. Uh, we have no idea what, what, what the cause was. We, we have no idea. It will take a long, uh, comprehensive investigation, multidisciplinary investigation, multi jurisdictional investigation, both federal and uh, local with us at HPD to determine the cause. The call that they responded to was bodies floating in the bayou, bodies in the bayou. And that's what they were working on when they went down and they were located around 2.04, a little after 2 a.m. Uh, no flames, which is a blessing. They, again, that, that pilot did a hell of a job not trying to avoid that, uh, that, that big apartment building there. Uh, we're very, that's a silver lining here. Anything else? Thank you all. Uh, and then if there's any Spanish, let me know. I'll do that on the side. Any Spanish? Okay. Thank you very much. A terrible update on this helicopter crash that happened overnight. We now know that one of the officers has succumbed to his injuries, a tactical flight officer. The police chief there giving that press conference, getting emotional as he called him a really good man. A tactical flight officer with a wife and two young children succumbing to his injuries overnight. The pilot also injured in that crash is still there fighting for his life. We're told that he is in surgery. This developing story we will continue to follow. We will be right back.